Hey Cody, so we're here to take a look at Tailpipe, the first seam for builders, a tool that enables you to gather tons of log data directly on your laptop, query it with SQL. Let's take a look. Yeah, sure. Excited to show what you can do with Tailpipe. Yeah, so I have Tailpipe installed, and here you can see some help information for it as well. So if I go ahead and install the AWS plugin. So there are plugins for other sources too, right? Like Azure, GCP, things like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a series of plugins, um, usually per you know cloud provider per service. Okay. So I see a list of commands there. I'm guessing the next one we're going to use is uh, collect. Yep. Exactly. Um, so what I'm going to do now, now that I have the AWS plugin installed, is I can go ahead and collect logs from AWS CloudTrail. Um, so I'll make sure that I pull in all the older log data that I have as well. Tailpipe is going out and you know getting artifacts or, or files and discovering those. And then from within those files, it's actually extracting and um, enriching rows from those files or turning those log entries into rows into a table that I'll show in a bit on that I'm able to query. So actually it's finished uh, while I was talking. So in okay. about 20 seconds, I was able to pull out 1.9 million rows um, from uh, 20 different files that it was able to locate. Okay. So that data is actually stored in Parquet files, but we're going to be able to query it with SQL, right? So like where you can run yep. a SQL query right from here. Exactly. What I can do is uh, one, just kind of see what logs do I have or how many did I pull down. Um, so using SQL, like you mentioned, I can go ahead and just run a really simple count. And from here I can see, you know, how I have 1.9 million rows that I was able to collect from my files. Okay. And I just want to point out that um, internally you've run this on, I think, 135 million rows. And yes. It didn't yeah. Break mm -hmm. a sweat, right. I mean, so the engine behind this thing is DuckDB and it is powerful. Yep. The speed and the ability to just run queries over this extremely large set of data is really impressive. Another query is looking or doing a count, but this time on rows for non read only events. So, write events or things that um, affect resources. Um, so here what's really interesting is that I I can see there's only actually around 1,200 rows for non-read-only type events. But if you're looking for bad actors, th those are the rows you want to focus on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. This next query, what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at across all of the events for the different services, um, which one appear the most. So, you know, top 10 events based on frequency, just a lot of EC2 activity in these accounts and then some um, additional EC2, STS, S3 calls as well. So again, just a really nice, easy way to get some stats about your logs. We can actually get per row information as well. So like you said, if you're looking for bad actors or particular events, you can actually start to dig in and get some specific event data at a time as well. So for instance, I can see um, a list instance profile event was run on, on um, February in 2017. And I can see it was done by the root user, actually. You probably had to do some configuration. What does that look like? Within my AWS tailpipe configuration file, uh, through these connections and partitions and sources, these are what allow me to define what data I want tailpipe to collect and from where as well. well that looks pretty straightforward. I mean, for the AWS S3 bucket, it's like five lines of config. All you have to do is name the bucket. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Most of the times you'll just need to specify the bucket name and then uh, the AWS plugin within Tailpipe will go and, and discover your CloudTrail logs and pull those out. Um, I've also defined the connection here. Um, just to note that connections are a way that you can tell this particular source within the partition, which credentials to use, how to connect to your AWS account to connect to that S3 bucket and pull out the logs. Um, so, and then the connection itself, I, you know, meant to be fairly simple where I'm actually just pointing to an AWS CLI profile within my credentials file to tell it how to connect to that AWS account. I mean, it looks like, by the way, there are different source types because I see file there as well. So you can also collect just from files that you have local. Um, yeah, in this case, I have a, or a set of locally downloaded CloudTrail logs that I've downloaded or extracted out of an S3 bucket previously. And yeah, I'm able to just iterate and these don't require any credentials. Okay, so, so this is the Tailpipe Hub. Yeah, so this is our Tailpipe Hub. Um, this is where anyone can go to learn more about all the plugins we have available. And then within each plugin, we have information about you know how to get started and, and the tables and the sources. Um, so for instance, here, this is the homepage. You can see um, the AWS plugin that we used before is available here, along with some others like the GCP and the Azure um, plugin as well. So jumping over to the AWS plugin page in particular, 
Um, you know, we have some additional information along with some getting started information, which is very similar to what I had shown before on how to install the plugin, collect the data, query as well. And some other tabs, we have some additional information about the tables themselves. So for instance, on that AWS CloudTrail log table that I used before, there's some additional information on how to get started. So very uh, table specific information on configuration and usage of that table. Here, we actually have some example queries that you can use yourself. You can go ahead and copy and paste these. Um, so as an example, if I go ahead and just take this query, looking for activity done by the root user, I can take that directly, copy and paste that query from the Tailpipe Pub, and then go ahead and run that directly right in the same um, interactive query mode that I did before. Um, there's also a ton of other queries that we have for each table as well. So as an example for the CloudTrail log table, I can see a variety of queries um, across multiple services that like I had shown for the root user query before, these are all meant to be copy pastable as well. Um, that is so a here, long list of stuff. Our goal is to make enough example queries available that hopefully someone can find a use case that they're interested in. They can run against their data and look at the rows and look at the results as well. And even if it's not exactly the event that they're looking for, Hopefully it's easy enough that you can copy paste and then modify some of the where clause or the select columns as well. We're going to look at the new tailpipe detections mod in PowerPipe. Let's see it. So here I'm just loading a relatively simple activity dashboard. Um, but with this dashboard, users can really start to get an idea of the shape of their logs or just some, some of the ongoing activity, you know, summary level information um, across all of their logs. So for instance, I can see here that US West 2, most of our logs are from that closely followed by US East 1, and then the other regions start to taper off a little bit from there. In terms of who's performing some of those actions within the account, I can get some um, actor information, including you know maybe some particular ARNs. So I can see I have a user called Backup. In this account, I can see that the root user in particular is used quite a bit, um, generally not recommended. But from this table, I can start to glean some of that information and start to get um, that high level view. So we can um, peek at the SQL query behind these, right? Yes. Yeah. So per dashboard element, I can go ahead and click in. And from here, I can actually to your point C exactly what that query is. So if I want to take this query out and use it locally or use it in another dashboard, um, right, the query is fully open. That looks like a pretty straightforward SQL query. Is that characteristic of working with tailpipe queries? Yeah, I would say so. Um, in general, the way that we've um, created the the table schemas and, and organized the data. The goal in general is to make it, like you said, really easy to query. And, and for people who are really familiar with SQL already and have some idea about CloudTrail logs, um, in general, I, I believe it's not too hard really to get started and start to explore the data and start to put queries together like this. We also have a um, series of detections, um, which are similar to controls for those who are familiar uh, with the PowerPipe controls and our other uh, mods. Um, but detections are um, something new in PowerPipe really to help users understand certain low, medium, high critical type um, activity across their logs um, to really get an idea of what's occurred um, within their accounts. And then from there, be able to do a deeper investigation. So a detection is, is basically looking for a pattern in log data. Yes, yeah, exactly. So here we can see it ran again. This is total across the 1.9 million rows that um, we had seen the summary information in the dashboard, um, but in, there's about 182 total um, detection matches or results or, or, or pattern matches like you had mentioned um, before. So let's dig into the critical one first. You know, these are the ones that people want to see. Um, here I can see that in general, our detections are grouped by service, just hopefully for easier findability. And then from here, under here, I can see actually within critical ones, Let's look at the root user console login. So out of the, all the logs that we have, there's been 62 events where the root user has logged in to the console. And just start to get some information about what occurred at what time. And then from here, I can start to see patterns where maybe across particular dates or, um, or from particular IPs, I can get an idea of, of what when this activity occurred. So you're going to typically have a lot of rows. It'd be nice if you could kind of filter them down, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Um, let's say for source IP, if I really wanted to hone in and see, I can see here from the 3.1 IP that there's some recent events. I can see, is this new or maybe have there been previous console logins from this IP? So what I can actually do is go ahead and filter just on this particular IP. And now I can see actually um, for root console logins from this IP, actually there's only two events total 
um, around the same time frame. So maybe whoever this was, um, new location, new computer, something like that. If I wanted to exclude these IPs from my results set, because I knew that what was going on at that time, I can also exclude them. So now the two rows that I had seen before from the 3.1, those are now um, not visible in my result set. So you basically go through, toss out the known good actors and zero in on the possible bad actors. Yep, exactly. So there's more there's more data here in the in the database behind um behind this than we're seeing, right? So Mm -hmm. Yep. So per row, um, beyond just the the columns that you see here, you can actually view all of the row data by expanding it out and even do some you know some searches within. So um, some of this information, uh, a, lot, a lot of this information you'll kind of see here on that initial table view. Um, but let's say I want to learn more, uh, maybe about user identity or maybe even like the user agent. I want to learn more about when they logged into that console. What was the user agent they were using at the time when they logged into that AWS console? So here I can see some browser information um, and just typical user agent stuff that is contained within that CloudTrail event, um, but all available from the full row view um, here, which you can expand out per row as well. Let's jump down to VPC, because this I think this is where a lot of people live and they kind of want to see what's happening in their network uh, or security groups. Um, in this case, I actually have a couple of results around for a given security group, for ingress or egress rules, a rule was added where um, it was zero, zero slash zero in IPv4 or IPv6. So all access was kind of opened in a particular rule. I can look at the IP permissions for that given security group. Here I can see this is the, the, the culprit. I can see that um, there was actually a rule added for IPv6 allowing all traffic on port 80. Um, so, you know, this might be um, an approved action, it, it might be something a bit suspicious, but either way, this gives me enough details where I can really dig in. And then from here, do a bit more investigation or look at that particular security group to learn more maybe about what happens at that time or maybe what that security group in particular is used for, um, and then go from there. So we can look at these yeah. detections through a different lens, right? Mm -hmm. So this view, we group them all by service, again, just for uh, easy searchability or organization. But like you had mentioned, um, we also take these detections and we put them under a, or organize them um, in a different way. So one view that we have is actually the MITRE attack framework. What does this mean? I understand that MITRE is a, is a framework for reasoning about these kinds of events. Um, how, how does this work out in terms of tailpipe? Taking all the tactics and the techniques um, that MITRE attack has defined and given guidance for, what we've done is taken some of those detections that I've shown before around looking for certain patterns or suspicious activity. What we do within the PowerPipe mod is that we actually take those detections and we map them into a given technique slash tactic mapping um, according to their guidance. So as an example, um, this is the detection we looked at before. It has the same results. Um, but what we've done is we've identified that this particular detection belongs in this particular technique around use of default accounts in the overall technique of valid accounts. And if I wanna learn more about what is this and maybe I'm not familiar with this particular technique or not familiar with MITRE ATT&CK at all or why this um, detection belongs in this particular benchmark, I can go ahead and get a nice overview um, about what this is and why I should care about it or how to interpret the results for this particular detection per the guidelines from that particular tactic or technique. That's really nice. Man, a lot of editorial work went into putting this stuff together. Yeah, definitely a lot of work put in behind organizing and making sure everything mapped out well, but I think uh, really helpful to have all of this put together and really just have it be point and click um, to be able to view your detections and then view them within the frame of something like the MITRE ATT&CK framework as well. Uh, we also have within the PowerPipe Hub, you can view all of these benchmarks for a given detection um, or a mod as well. So for instance, for that for that AWS CloudTrail log detection, which is contained all of the dashboards and detections that I was just showing here, you know, on the landing page, similar to the Tailpipe Hub plugin page, we have some information on how you can go ahead and, and get started and get everything working. Um, but in particular, if you wanted to learn a bit more about some of those um, benchmarks or detections that we were running, uh, we also have these available um, in a nice organized fashion. So the one that we were looking at before, Tactic 0001, Initial Access. I can just start to keep drilling down. And from here, I can see for this given tactic and technique, what detections are available in here as well. And this is all open source, right? I could file an issue on this if I wanted to. 
Yep, exactly. So um, if I go ahead and click into you know this particular detection on the root user console login that I've kind of been showing throughout, I can get a nice link out to here. And then from here, I can actually see the definition in HCL for the detection along with the query um, that runs behind it. So all of this is open source. So if someone wants to take a look at it or even clone it, modify it to their own specifications and then run it, um, you know, all possible based on how the detections and queries are available, like you mentioned on GitHub. This is beautiful, Cody. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're ready to get started with Tailpipe, you'll find more information and a getting started guide at tailpipe.io.